Hello all, welcome to Knife Edge UK. Um, we've got another little video today. We're gonna do a, a bit of a kind of high-end, draw-worthy overview um, of uh, what for me was a complete grail knife um, in, in the genuine sense of the word. This is a David Moser uh, Merceda and it's absolutely gorgeous. So you could just click away if you don't wanna see any more of it now because you've kind of heard what I think. But we will carry on and hopefully you'll just enjoy looking at it. So here we go with a few size comparisons because you know it's the rule on YouTube. Maybe I'll just stop doing size comparisons. Tell me in the comments, should I just stop doing size comparisons? Is it worthwhile, particularly for customs like this? Anyway, that's a large Svenza 21. Um, we will put it next to a Sleesh buoy. This new background is not so great with very grey knives, is it? Grey on grey wasn't the best idea I've ever had. But, you know, we're here now, so we might as well carry on. Uh, there it is next to a 3 point... No, it's not a 3... Yes, it is. God, my brain. 3.5 XM18. And then we'll put it next to a couple of other kind of mad customs because, well, why not? That's a small Nirvana from Peter Rosenti. Two North American knives there. And we'll throw a little piece of South African wonder in with this three inch uh, Chamwari. So you can really get a clear idea of the blade size there. This is not a terribly large knife, though um, it has kind of a bigger presence about it. When you see pictures of it, you could probably be forgiven for thinking this is going to be really big and, and burly, but it's not at all. It's actually got a relatively um, slender blade stock in the grand scheme of, of knives like this. You can see it there next to a, a 3.5 XM18. It's it's certainly not thick at all, and it's um it's got a really nice fine grind, which brings us on to the actual knife itself. So who's David? If you don't know, David's kind of one of the most sought after um, American knife makers. He posts his knives up for sale one at a time on his Instagram. It's first come, first serve. Sometimes you get a bit of pre-warning with some pictures of the in progress, and then he'll drop it, and it's it's fastest finger first. Whoever gets a direct message over to him fast, fast enough will have the opportunity to purchase the knife. Um, they're certainly not cheap um, and the secondary market for them is is kind of scary as well so the merceda it's my kind of favorite design it it feels so quintessentially his knives to me it's got a really angular kind of slightly angry look about it um, but it's also got such a level of refinement to it and that starts with the blades so he these are all hand ground and his grime work is impeccable it is so even between the different sides and the edge is super thin. So even though you have, you know, a flat grind that starts a little past halfway up the blade, it, it comes down to such a fine edge. And this sort of tanto, harpoon, drop point, clip point, slightly bowie-ish, it, it, it's like, you know, loads of different blade styles in one is just beautiful. And then this one's done in quite a character in its characteristic finish for David, um, in that this I believe is an electronic, electro etch. And it's got this really cool kind of stonewashed, but not quite mottled appearance. It's it's really nice. It's got such a, a nice view and it doesn't feel dirty in any way, like an acid wash. Uh, well, I like acid washes as well, but how acid washes can sometimes feel, it's very smooth and even. It's, it's just beautiful. It's a great blade. It's jimped at the top, very comfortable. So, moving on. Sorry, I'm waxing lyrical. We're already almost four minutes in, and I've not even gotten to the handle of the knife, so I'm going to get a move on. So, we've got thumb studs here. As you can see, this is a thumb stud only deployment knife. These are zirconium, a nice little touch, with what is a real. Unfortunately, I think I've got a bit of a shadow going on here. I wonder if that will pick it up. Maybe, maybe not. So you've got a slight orange peel on top of the thumb stud, which is just really nicely done because these are domed thumb studs, so it'd be quite easy to slip off them if it wasn't for that little bit of extra traction they provide, which is really good. Uh, I was gonna go into the action there, but we'll carry on with the handle. So from there, we've got this really characteristically designed handle with this almost kind of, you know, gunstock kind of flair about it. It's really interesting. The front of this one is a bone linen micarta scale, really beautiful piece of micarta uh, that's been really nicely finished and perfectly matched around the whole of the body. It's really finely polished it's like it, it's got this lovely thing where it's not been shine polished but it's beautifully sanded it's 
just excellent. You have this little bit of extra milling here, which is mirrored on the lock side. The lock side, incidentally, is done in, it's a frame lock without an insert, but with no lock stick, it's just a fantastic feeling lock bar. It's done in this kind of antique bronze, which is beautiful. It's got a darker bronze on the top and then slightly lighter bronze where it's been kind of further polished before it was anodized, I imagine. And the pocket clip's done in that slightly brighter. Blackened uh, titanium hardware that's custom, really nice. And a zirconium backspacer, which is very good. It's perfectly finished at the top. It's got the same kind of slight orange peel texture. It's not that zirconium which takes a fingerprint instantly. You don't see prints on this, but it's got that really nice sort of dark contrast. Incidentally, you've got the liner, which is done in the same titanium finish as the lock side, and this little bit of jimping on the back of the knife there. In hand, it's beautifully comfortable. It's one of the few designs which feels kind of instantly as ergonomic as almost anything you could have. It's got sort of quite clearly defined finger points, but not in a way that feels like it's really constraining you. It would be you know, yes, these are very, very expensive, but it would be an excellent user. Uh, you can hold it in this point or, and reach forward for some extra pressure. Uh, you're on the jimping there, which locks you in, but isn't overly aggressive, actually. It will hold you, but it's not, it's not really nasty. And then you can choke forward slightly onto this flat, which is comfortable. Obviously, you need to be a bit careful of the edge there. And your finger drops beautifully. You can, incidentally, put that in there as well. But your finger drops, your thumb rather, drops beautifully into this little notch excellent. So ergonomically it's beautiful as well. Action, it's running on bearings and it has a Mosia detent which is a classic detent system, just a normal frame lock detent but as David says on his um, Instagram page, if you go to the very top of his Instagram, it says warning, something to this effect, warning my knives have strong detents and sure they do. This one pops out forward you know forward standard and reverse flick really nicely you just apply pressure to the thumb stud and it just flies out of the handle it's got really really good acoustics it's not a drop shutty knife it's got a decent amount of lock bar pressure um, and it's got a, well, I say drop shut, it is drop shutty, but it's not a free falling guillotine drop shut. It takes us a nice little shake and it's very glassy as it glides back down into the closed position. It's a really good action. Incidentally, this could actually do with a clean and it's still beautiful. I'm told by um, another uh, collector who had handled this one and has owned a few or handled quite a few of David's knives that this one has a slightly more approachable detent, particularly for the reverse flick than some. Uh, I could believe him from what I've been told about David's uh, whoops, David's detents being very hard. I don't. This is a hard detent, sure, but I don't think it's. Uh, let's put it this way: I wouldn't feel the need to to read a disclaimer on the detent for this one. So I find it quite comfortable. The thumb stud on the back is sl the angle to it where you would normally reverse flick is slightly obscured by this scallop. I don't really think it's a big deal. You can still get to it or like that's with the nail. This is with the pad of the finger. So I don't really think it's a big deal to be honest, but it's worth mentioning. And yeah, I mean, what else is there to say about a knife this beautiful and this desirable? It's it's absolutely fantastic. I'm, I'm slightly in love with this one. It's definitely one of my favorite pieces in the collection. Um, I'm very lucky to have it, as I say. And um, I thought I'd bring it out for everyone to have a look at today. So I hope you enjoyed seeing it. If you get a chance to grab a piece of David's work and you can afford to, uh, it's well worth doing. Um, they're just, yeah, they're, they're fantastic. Great stuff. Thanks very much, guys. Catch you soon.